unapologetic dudes. When we think of Christmas, we think of loved ones gathered around the tree, eggnog, and Christmas presents. But what really winds up happening is those loved ones are all at each other's throat, that eggnog has whiskey in it, <laughs> and more often than not, the presents under the tree are yet another undersized pair of socks to be tossed in the drawer. I thought the best way to express the reality of Christmas is for each of us to tell a tale of something zany, something zany, that happened to each of us on Christmas. Does anything pop into mind just for me saying that? Yeah. I'm going to let you ponder on that for a moment, and I'm going to toss mine out here. Mine goes back to this probably just, you know, a few years ago or so. So me and this girl I had been dating for, I don't know, six months, maybe better. She was a crazy one, right? And I love that girl. Anyone who knows me knows I love the train wrecks. That's my <laughs> stuff, you know. I will board and crash with you. Now, we go to a comedy show that's on Christmas Eve at a bar, right? And they had two-for-one shots. Now, for a couple who both drink, that is bad news by the end of it, right? So the comedian, for some reason, was selling thongs. I go ahead and sneak off to the side, and I buy her a thong, and I guess her size. Now, bear in mind, she, she was a petite gal, very small. So we get in the vehicle. She's driving back, which was questionable at best. And uh, <laughs> we're going down the road, and I'm like, hey, look what I got you. Ching! And she looks at him, and she's like, that's not even my size. Do you think I'm that size? <laughs> and I was drunk, so I was just like, you know what? You don't like him? Fing! <laughs> Threw him out the window, down the road on range line, right? So she goes stone quiet. She goes statue, and I'm in the passenger seat like, uh-oh. <laughs> so she pulls up to a house I've never seen, never been to, no idea. She doesn't say a word. She gets out of the vehicle and goes inside. One could assume one of two things, really one of one thing is happening, right? And I'm like, I ain't about to sit out here like this. <laughs> so we were about half a mile away from your house when you lived in Webb at this point. I decide I'm going to walk to your house. It's probably like 11 o'clock or something. I'm like, he's going to be up, whatever. All the lights were shut off. I'm banging on the door. <laughs> You're not answering. So I'm like, oh, shoot, where do I go? What do I do? I start walking down the road because uh, I had a family member who lived about a mile away from where you were at. And sure enough, she knew that that's where I'd be going. So she was driving up and down the road and she eventually sees me and she's like, get in. I'll give you a ride. I didn't really have much choice. I was like, all right. So get in the vehicle. Once again, she doesn't say a word. <laughs> we get back to the house and uh, I get out. She pulls off. I'm like, okay, avoided the big blowout, not knowing what was about to happen. <laughs> so I go inside and I message her and I'm like, hey, and unless it wasn't clear, you know, whatever we had here is now done. So I lay my phone down. It wasn't about 45 seconds later, I hear the screeching of brakes, right? <laughs> so she done pulled right back around and she didn't come up and knock on the door. When I looked out the window, she had her back to the door and she was booting it. Okay. <laughs> she was coming in. So I open the door, she starts hitting me, okay? Then she sits down on the couch and I start explaining things to her and it was like this rotation of every 30 seconds. I was in a computer chair. She'd come and dive on top of me, knock the chair down, <laughs> start wailing on me, right? She was passing out as all this is happening, right? She's like, how dare you do that? And I ain't gonna. So I'm like, what do I do here? I debated on whether to pick her up and go put her out in her car, and maybe even drive it up the road and just leave it. And I'm like, nah, because then I'm going to be asleep. She's going to come back, right? So I decide to get a cover, lay down on the couch with her. And I was like, I'm going to hold her. That way when she gets up, she doesn't like burn my house down or something. <laughs> so sure enough, she gets up. Once again, not a word. She just leaves. And I'm like, okay, okay. I think everything, I think everything's good here. So she knew it's now Christmas Day that I'm about to go to a family member's house. So I get all dressed and around, da-da-da. And as I pull up, I see her pulling up behind me. She was sitting on a side street waiting for me to drive by. Oh, so we are now out in front of one of my relatives' house. So I can't have it out with her, right? Because, you know, my family wouldn't understand the context. I would just be the, the loon out there yelling <laughs> at this girl. So I have to sit and have the whole Christmas dinner with her play nice and everything else <laughs> then we go back and she warns me 
that we're not done, right? <laughs> now this Except was for when I say it's over. <laughs> this was December twenty fifth. Now rest assured, by New Year's, I was done with her, and I haven't talked to this girl since. But every time I think of Christmas, I think of that awkward dinner that was caused by that drunken night, and what in the shenanigans was she doing in that house? <laughs> but like I say, anyone who knows me knows I like the train wreck. Hell, the only girl I ever lived with, I moved in here. She was a complete train wreck, and that lasted for several years. So all aboard the crazy train. <laughs> what delightful thing comes to mind for you when we say Christmas? Well, sure, I don't know if I can top that story. It's pretty good. <laughs> Mine actually goes the complete opposite direction. <laughs> Christmas Eve, 11.30 rolls around, and we each had a bottle of fucking Mad Dog that we haven't touched yet. I'm like, oh, we got down this for Christmas. I, I don't know why. What the reason was. <laughs> but we did. We each chugged this bottle of Mad Dog in a matter of 30 minutes or so. Shortly after, I ended up outside blowing chunks yeah, all Mad over Dog the place. Is mean. Yeah. That's about the last thing I remember. Woke up outside in a field, nothing but my shorts. I said, not as extravagant as your story. Well, where was, where was your, your guy pal? Where was he at? In, he has in, passed out in the garage. <laughs> so y'all each picked separate places to go disrobe and pass out. Apparently, yeah. <laughs> and if I'm guessing off of my experiences with Mad Dogs, neither one of y'all just straight passed out. After you puked, you laid down, you threw up for about 45 minutes in agony, and then passed out somewhere in between the uh, bouts of vomiting. More than likely, yeah. Do they still sell <laughs> Mad Dog? I think so. Because what is it? It's Kool-Aid with just like malt I liquor. It's, I think it's a cheap wine. It oh, is it a wine? I think so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it might be. That was the stuff we drank when we were like 16 and we needed to like get a girl drunk. Yeah, it's like $3 a bottle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was the same with, I remember uh, when I was like 17, 18, I lived with this dude and he was like walking distance from uh, from a smoke shop there at uh, 7th and Illinois, I think it was. Uh, St. Louis. St. Louis, yeah. I would go down there and they would have this like fifth of vodka you could buy for like $3.75. <laughs> it was vanilla vodka. Yeah. And they never carted at these places because <laughs> why would they, I guess? So I would go there and I would always have that bottle of vodka. And then when girls would come over, I'd be like, hey, have a shot, da, da, da. But I knew better not to drink it. You know what I mean? And it was the same with Mad Dog. I learned my lesson super early with Mad Dog. <laughs> never touched it again. It's sort of like I always enjoyed the whiskey in my eggnog. But that comes back to bite you every single time. You're not a whiskey man, though, are you? I like whiskey. I don't think I've ever had it with eggnog. You've never had it with eggnog? Uh -uh. It is delicious. <laughs> like, you can go to the smoke shops if you don't want to make it yourself and buy two different things, and they'll sell you a, <clears throat> a fifth of eggnog, uh, not James. I think I've seen a Jim Bean. Jim Bean, yeah. Um, it'll be Jim Bean and eggnog. Now, it's not very potent. It's like uh, 20 30%. It's just like a mixed drink would be, right? But yeah, you could drink like I used to buy them every Christmas and I drink the entire fifth. And it's, you know what I mean? It's not like drinking an entire fifth, right. right? It's like drinking four mixed drinks. But yeah, you can get a fifth of that for like seven, eight bucks. But yeah, eggnog and uh, whiskey is just as uh, American as uh, OJ and vodka, which is where we were talking earlier. That's how I started my day <laughs> back when I was drinking, anyhow. You wake up hungover, you have a couple drinks just to get right, then you have a couple more. Cause you want to feel good, and then by ten thirty in the morning, you're outside arguing with a tree. <laughs> I am so glad I got away from alcohol, and that is why I have this stunning physique you see before you now. So, as we all know, Christmas is an absolute joy, and I wish that each of your stockings are properly stuffed on December twenty fifth. Good night, Merry. Christmas. Not apologize.